questions about uh, the to be collecting. They're the clean, absolutely incredible to assure that those sample tubes are incredibly clean. One of the main goals of this mission is to be able to detect preserved in those rocks, in those ever sent into space. Working with us. You are correct. Great partners with the uh, Europe sample return lander that we hope to over will drive out and pick up the samples that Perseverance left on the surface of Mars. And the Fetch rover will bring them back and load them into uh, a rocket that we call the Mars Ascent Vehicle, which will be the first ever launch from another planet. Uh, and it will launch those samples into orbit around Mars. In the meantime, bring them back to Earth for, for us to study back here in our amazing uh, ever landed on Mars will be that step of the first launch from another planet. So exciting, Lori. And speaking about the Mars generation. Um, to wait so long for a sample. So long to get the sample. They come back, you will be the scientists and engineers that will, will be the, the next generation to, to change how we think about, uh, about Mars and how we think about. Back to you, Raquel, for another mission. Thanks, Marina. The, the CBM change, uh, as I mentioned previously, is to the EDL reserve to a non-coherent row. activity. Copy flight. EDL phase, go ahead. Okay, have talk, I guess, to the team. Reputation. The, uh, to the launch cruise team. Uh, you've done everything we've asked for, right? I mean, so. Um, and she's right on target, right? You, you did up with us, too, right? You've put up with our eccentricities and uh, the things we like to do in EDL land. So I very much appreciate that. Uh, so uh, you all should sleep in on Friday since uh, I, you, know, you guys have earned it. Um, thanks for literally and figuratively putting us in the right position to succeed. And uh, let's land on Mars together. It's been an amazing journey, I think. Truly, truly inspiring. So kudos to you. Mission, would you like to say something? Yeah, just echoing the same words that, uh, that Al and Magdi room on launch day at L minus 20 minutes, 20 minutes. So you've uh, accomplished so far. I look forward to seeing you on the other side. And I only wish that the rest of our team could be sharing this moment with us. EDL start anchor. Um, as I was mentioning, we changed our CBM row to EDL reserve two-way non-coherent. That row oscillator. We have also started our real-time data product and reinforced medley on. At this time, we... Um, now, we just heard Perseverance team... Now, did you know the rover name... And submitted the winning essay that was selected by NASA from a field of more than 28,000 entries from K through 12 students in every state in the U.S. Vanessa Rupani said, join us now. Welcome, you guys. Hello, space nerds. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> now you got to go... A single one of them always talks ration mixed with anticipation along with that rumble in my chest. That's very inspirational, and I'm sure that you have had many conversations with your classmates since this all began. Now, what kind of questions have they asked you? I got some people asking me about what this helicopter operation. Because space is the future, and kids are the future. Learning about space and watching the story of humanity spread to the stars. To protect our planet is to learn from the worlds around it. So I think it's really important for the next generation of scientists to be engaged in that type of exploration to make our home the best place it can be. I'm currently applying to a war about to make this happen. Space engineering on all the boxes. I mean, the whole time we were there, I was thinking, why would anyone want to do anything else? So true, and the best of luck to both of you. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Alex and Vanessa. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much, I had a great time. All over the world that were submitted.gov for your boarding pass. As virtual celebrations are happening all over the globe, let's take a look at some of your submissions on our social channels, showing us how you're celebrating the Perseverance landing right now. And remember to hashtag Countdown to Mars and send those in. We would love to show them of Perseverance, which is, oh, I have a nine-year-old John at home and he loves to draw the rover. And look at that. That is awesome. That's better than anything I could bake. That's for sure. Perseverance in a cake. That looks so great. Delicious. I want to get into that. Another great send in from David Bowie Real. 
Thank you so much for your submissions. Remember, hashtag Countdown to Mars. We love to see how you're celebrating. Now, you might know our next guest from shows like Emily's Wonder Lab. Joining me now is Emily Kellandrelli. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Now, you are very passionate about... Well, I know the reason I'm excited about space, and I think it's the same reason that many others are excited about space, and it's that the people in the space industry work to answer two of the biggest questions that humans have ever asked. Are we alone in the universe, and where did we all for? And I, I think that's so exciting. It is. And I know you get loads of interesting questions from kids. Have you gotten... Everybody loves Mars. It's in movies and bread because it's literally rusty. The top layer of soil on Mars has iron oxide in it or rust. And rust has that brownish red color. So it's, it's red because it's rusty. And also because it's red, they ask, is it red hot? Is it really hot on Mars? And well, no, actually, it's colder than the Earth. It's farther away from the sun. So as you would imagine, it's a little bit colder than the Earth. It also has a really thin atmosphere. So the heat that it does have, it has a hard time keeping in. Um, and so it's a little bit colder. But then I also get asked, what would I weigh on Mars? That's a really fun question. So on Mars, it's a little bit smaller than the Earth. So the gravity there is weaker. It's about three eighths the gravity that we have here on Earth. So if you weighed 100 pounds here on Earth, you'd weigh 38 pounds on Mars or 100 kilograms here on Earth, 38 kilograms on Mars. Those are all super fun. I think even some adults want to know the answers to those questions, Emily. <laughs> now, why do you yeah. think it's so important to educate kids about science and give them that great foundation? Well, science is the language of, and honestly, those skills are great what about today. I mean, humans are a lot when humans have the ability to bring it back to you now, Raquel. Thanks, Marina. We are offering lots of ways to ride along with us to Mars. Now put yourself right into the action now with our Perseverance photo booth. You can pose next to the rover, place yourself in our mission control, and even see what you might look like taking a selfie. Send your name to Mars on NASA's chief engineer and landing veteran, Rob Manning. He will be breaking down key moments coming up and very few people know more about landing on Mars than Rob going back to the Pathfinder mission in 1997. Thanks for joining us today, Rob. Yeah, thank you very much, Rick, for, for having me here. And it, what a wonderful experience. <clears throat> what a wonderful day for a beautiful day in California. We've, we're just also excited here, anxious, worried, but very hopeful. Did that start? Yes, it started in the, in the mid-1960s. What happened was we had a series of missions that had failures. The Ranger program in the early 1960s, the attempt, decided to bring peanuts to the ops area just before the, before the launch, and guess what? That mission worked. Now, we're not supposed to be too superstitious. We're engineers and scientists after all, but we love tradition. And ever since then, before launch and before do, we're doing right now, and uh, we're packing some peanuts to the team, and they can sneak a pe one peanut in their mouth for, uh, for as part of the, to keep the tradition alive. But you know, th this is part of the COVID experience, but we can't leave this one uh, undone. So th this is what we're doing, and, we're, and, uh, and, and this is gonna help us land safely. All right, thanks, Rob. I have some questions for you a little later on, but we are heading back to Swati Mohan, who is part of the landing team. She'll be calling out key milestone and events as they happen from Mission Control. So let's listen in right now. So right now we're still about 20 minutes from entry and the EO happening. This is one of the things that allow, um, and we're depending on the same target. Uh, we need to get rid of a uh, set um, uh, telling us that we're at parachute 17 seconds later. Right where the Perseverance team is sitting now. Copy, Flip. Can you make the announcement now? Go ahead. Maggie, you make the announcement that... And right where the Perseverance team is. Approach crew stage separation. The, the transmitter on this rover that we've been using all the way to get to Mars is going to be turned off. <clears throat> um, so, we're, we, and so that, like, like a flashlight. But soon after that, coming from the spacecraft. Um, so it's so difficult. 
Well, it's <clears throat> well because it's involved thousands and thousands of things, hundreds of thousands of lines of code. We, there, there is, uh, you know, and, and, and so, and, and it's very easy. We're human beings. We're not perfect. Mistakes can be made. Um, we count on each of the past. Um, we've had many failures, half, remind people, roughly half, a little, uh, around half of the missions to Mars over history have failed. Um, and so it's, 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 that could happen today too. Even though we've had a nice stack the deck, dice, stack the deck and, uh, and loaded the dice to make this thing succeed. Um, but um, if we do, if we do fail, and, and, and if, if we are allowed, we will pick ourselves allow, we will try again. Separating from the crew stage is, is a pretty major event. Lots of devices have to work properly. Um, certainly, um, the heat shield separation, uh, getting, getting the, the descent engine started, there's no less than, than uh, uh, 16 ent rocket motors that have Earth. We can't do, uh, we don't have test pilots to try it out on this planet before the big show. So this vehicle is doing it for the first time. We've done the best testing we can do in bits and pieces, but you know, it's an engineering achievement. And I am just so proud of this team. Thanks, Rob. Now, let's listen back into Mission Control. All right, we're about 14 minutes from entry interface. The vehicle is currently preparing under four minutes now. We have now enabled the rover Pyro bus. That's the pyrotechnic uh, system um, that, that was that's gonna- We are gonna powering off the cruise stage devices. That, and the, and these, are the, these are the things in the cruise stage that, we'll, that we no longer need. With the pyrotechnic system working, we can, you can, we can explode the devices. The vehicle is preparing for the upcoming cruise stage operation in about three minutes, 15 seconds, by powering off all the devices on the cruise stage in order that they can be safe once. Very reliable from getting too hot in the way to Mars. Rest vent anchor is complete. Yes. We will see the next anchor in, in two minutes and 20 seconds. What's happening now, Rob? Okay, well, ju we're just waiting. The, 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 it's the rover is completely in charge. It's a day, seven days a week, testing this thing for years. And, and, and so this is, uh, this is really the culmination of all that work. So this vehicle is, is, gonna, is getting ready to push that cruise stage away. Uh, once it gets pushed away, um, it, 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 the entry system with the rover inside, with the rover is still in charge, it's going to get ready to, to uh, take the vehicle, turn it to the right orientation and aim it to Mars and, and, uh, and prepare for entering the atmosphere. This won't be long. Um, be prepared for this event. Taking We're about a minute and a half from the stage separation. About 11 minutes, 20 seconds from entry. Telemetry will have stopped. About um, t 9, 10 minutes from now, once the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter starts relaying information from Perseverance. Coming, standing by for... Yes. We have indication that crew stage separation has been confirmed by the spacecraft. We're off on a good start. In about one minute, Perseverance's landing software will wake up and begin the final preparations for entry. The first action it will do is we're about nine minutes from entry interface. Okay, so now the vehicle's on its own. It's, gonna, it's turning itself into the direction of facing the heat shield toward Mars. Uh, pass through our beam to between the Perseverance. We have a vehicle has the confirmation that the aircraft has turned. The vehicle is pointed in the right direction and can, can control its orient orientation and attitude via rockets on the back of the back shell. points carrier lock. Uh, sorry, and we're the DTE from uh, Radio Science. Six minutes and 45 seconds pass. We're currently just over six minutes from entry interface. Okay, and now we wait. As soon as we get to the top of the atmosphere. Five and a half minutes from entry interface on Earth, about 90 in near real time. Uh, there are a few expected short outages, 
such as when we have a plasma backout or when we enter the peak heating phase. Aside from these outages caused by the plasma blackout, antenna switching, uh, a plasma blackout is when the signal from perseverance isn't strong enough to make it through the superheated, super fat interface. Perseverance could be to receive the signals from Perseverance. It should be in a few minutes here. We're just flight local minutes. one. That's what he said, uh, but post landing, we won't get that data for several hours after landing, as it's being recorded, and then will be forwarded to Earth later. We are continuing to receive heartbeat tones, indicating that everything is nominal. We're currently at Hope, from our radio on the rover. Ah. By the time Perseverance reaches it, interface. data from Perseverance. We're about... ...of Mars. ...here of Mars to slow it down. Once there is enough atmosphere, it will start controlling its path to the landing target. Navigation is also confirming that we can see a little bit of that slowdown of target. Uh, as indicated that it felt outage uh, of the UHF telemetry from Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter during that. Perseverance is going about one kilometers per second at an altitude of about 16 kilometers from the surface of Mars. where the spacecraft will jettison the entry balance masses in preparation for parachute deploy and to roll over to give the radar a better look at the ground. Confirm confirmed that the parachute has 145 meters per second. And now has radar lock on the ground. Current velocity is about 100 meters per second, 6.6 .6 kilometers of the surface coming up on the initialization of terrain relative navigation and subsequently the priming of the landing engines. Our current velocity is about 90 meters per second at an altitude of 4.2 kilometers. We are conducting the sky crane. Expected. Sky crane maneuver has started. Signals from M MRO. The surface of Mars. At this point, the descent stage has flown away to a safe distance. 